Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Michael back at you guys with The Real 1%, and we're coming at you guys with another episode of the, the, the successful transition to from military to civilian life, and we got my brother John here today. How you doing, bro? Good, Michael. How are you? Not bad, man. Thanks for being here today. Thank you. I, it's a privilege. Hey, no problem, man. Just trying to help. We're just trying to help who we can when we can. So it's a joint effort. Looking yep. forward to hearing your story today. And if you don't mind, can you bring everybody up to speed that's listening? You know, give us a little background on you. You know, what made you join the military? What branch of service did you join? And then, you know, I'm not sure if you. I think you retired, but go ahead and let us all know, like, what your transition period looked like. What when did you start thinking about getting out the military, and and what did you start doing? Okay. Um, I joined the military late in my life. Um, when I was 26 years old, I was having a rough time. I was put on the street by my ex-wife. Okay. Yeah. So I decided that the military was my way of, uh, rebuilding my life. Okay. So I joined the military in 92, went to, um, airborne infantry, uh, 82nd airborne. So I was in the army okay. and um, basically stayed in the, um, I did airborne infantry my whole career pretty much, except when I went, you know, different things, but. I finally decided after 22 years to retire um, in 2015. Okay. Uh, when I got out, like everybody else, we got a plan. We're going to make it happen. We're going to make it work. Um, <laughs> doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way at all. I was messed up from a prior deployment. Um, I had PTSD, TBI, um, trying to fight with the VA to get disability claims and stuff like that. I'm um, really frustrated. And basically one day before becoming homeless, because my plan failed, um, I, uh, found a job here in Las Vegas and, um, started my quest to rebuild, um, and understand transition because transition's rough. Everyone knows in the military, when you transition, you don't have your, your brothers with you. You don't have this with you. You don't have the regular support systems that you're accustomed to in the military. Yeah. So, um, I luckily got a job just to survive. I had somebody that helped me get my VA claim in, um, course the va lowballed me at 70 percent sent it back in immediately they gave me 100 i'm 200 well, you got but you got out with nothing though i did and what what was your rank if you don't mind me asking i'm a retired master sergeant i was a first sergeant and they retired me as a master sergeant dude i'm sorry it just blows my mind because it's hearing all this stuff from people that i, I did eight years but still people that did the time that you guys put in man and you just get out and the claim you could have probably had that claim in a year out. I don't know. I got out 2015 too. I'm not sure what the protocol was then, but still, man, like you didn't have anyone while you were in or the wherewithal or anything. Like when you were looking back on it, what's your thought process on that now? Like when you look back on that right now, um, I think I should have planned out for getting out a lot, a lot sooner. Um, yeah, a year or two out. Instead, um, I. I have a bad history of getting blown up in the military on my deployments. And the last time I was blown up in a training area at Fort Irwin, um, I was just like, that's it. I'm done. Yeah. Here's quick as possible. And that's the route I took. Thinking I had everything squared away. I had a you know bachelor's degree, a master's degree. Resume was stacked. Everything was good. Yeah. I put 200, I think, resumes at that time. And nobody was going to give me a job. Um, I get, got two interviews, one with security company. One with um with where where I finally eventually got a job from out of two hundred resumes. So it's like, what am I doing wrong? Like right. everything else, my resume looked awful. It had all my military stuff on it, and still the employers don't understand that. Yeah, it's like a different. It's like a foreign language. Yeah, so they don't understand our acronyms. They don't understand our, our militarisms. I guess you could say our our demeanor, our, our sense of humor, yeah, our, sar our sarcasm. You know, whatever. Right. And they think we're going to take over the world. Um, which is not the case. I just wanted a job. I want to help the organization out and everything. And finally did that, got squared away. And I, I was frustrated because I was like, I don't want anybody else to experience that. So I went ahead and, and finished um, my PhD in psychology to understand my PTSD, TBI, the transition part, which my dissertation was on military transition. Um, understanding all that stuff. And I was like, you know, People do not have need that. There's so many resources out there. So many of these things. So in my four year journey of doing that, I acquired all this knowledge that I wanted to share with you. And that eventually provoked me to write my book on military transition. The, the book's name is, is a veteran resources and transition guide, it's 737 pages on how to, or if you should transition and make sure you're prepared for that. And when you're out, it shows you all the resources that are out there for you. 
how'd you come up with the idea to do that just from stumbling on your own way through and you're like i gotta get something on paper and put it out here to the to the mass yeah oh see well luckily when i got i got employed i got employed by a, a veteran homeless provider okay um they gave me some resources but it wasn't enough it was just helping the homeless there's people that don't become homeless they need resources too and how to work things right um so all the studies I did and all the research I did on veteran transition in my PhD gave me all this knowledge. When I got done, I'm like, okay, I got the the, the, the certificate and diploma, but I can't share it with anybody. So I decided to write a book about it to share all this knowledge with everybody and um, help them out. What's uh, where can they find your book at? Amazon. 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 Or on Amazon, if you if you search for a veteran resources and transition guide. It'll pop up. There'll be two versions: an electronic version, which is ten bucks, and a print version, which is like twenty nine dollars. Costs so much to print nowadays; it's crazy. Yeah, seriously. Did you do a self publish, or did you work with someone to help you on that? I self published. Okay. Um, I had to figure my PhD prepared me how to write because I used to write a lot. Right. Um, and breaking it down military wise, and it's an all encompassing book. It basically provides um, resources on, on how to transition if you transition. Um, it helps people, employers understand what military is. It's a there's a culture 101, military culture 101 class in there. Um, it helps people prepare for um, their loved ones' funerals. It has survivors' benefits checklists and stuff like that. Okay. And all the resources that you are, you know, like if, if your father was a die, you couldn't find wills, you couldn't find this, you couldn't find that. It helps you understand that and how to prepare for that. So, okay, I mean, that's awesome. All, it has, I mean, it has all all the the companies that give you discounts in there. It has all the state benefits that gives you in each state. Um, it has everything that a guy would want to know if he wants to get out of the military. Okay. All right. Awesome, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look that up and look at it myself because probably be good talking points to just put out there to the public if they don't want to. You know what I mean? It's like it's it's just so much stuff out there. And it's awesome because I'm thinking the same thing like you did. Like you got to we gotta bring it all under one roof, man. You know what I mean? Sort of. Well, that was my whole goal is to, uh, an all-encompassing one-stop shop. You know, we okay. all knew what one stop is in the military. Yeah, exactly. A place where you could go to get everything taken care of. Well, this book is, is is that. I mean, basically, it starts from beginning, goes to end. And if there's anything missing, all you have to do is email me, and I'll put it in there. It's a living book. I update it about every two months. Okay, nice. What um, uh, what was some of the major things that you struggled with when you when you made your transition out? Looking back at it, I'll uh, be honest with you. Um, I wasn't financially prepared. Um, I should have had less bills. Okay. You go without income for, you know, when your terminal leave ends, you have, you know, X amount of time before your other income will start. So you got to have a, a basically a, a slush fund. Right. If yeah. You, if you don't have bills, you don't need as much of a slush, slush fund. So I, I would say for anyone wanting to get out is to plan ahead and get rid of your bills and start saving money so you can have that, you know, comfort while you're transitioning. Okay. What did you, uh, did you use anything to your benefit when you're getting out? Any any programs like the VA loan or any anything that they offered on your way out? Yeah, I mean VA loans is is, a, is one I think one of the best hidden secrets for military. Um, it has so much money to it, and another thing is the VA claim. Don't do it by yourself. Seriously, <laughs> don't have an expert in there. There's plenty of free experts that'll go out there and help you get through the process. Process. Yeah. Um, and there's people that you, you you can pay for if you're frustrated after doing it for two or three years, which I know a lot of people are. Right. But you don't have to pay for it. You can get a free person to write everything up the way it's supposed to be written up. And then the, the key thing to that is having a, delegating a liaison for you is if you run into a bind and, they, and the VA has a question, they put two piles. One pile is for people that have representatives and one pile is for, for people that don't. This pile right here gets super long and it never comes back to you for six to seven months. Yeah. This pile is, is immediately intercepted by the liaison because they check on it about weekly and then they answer the questions and resubmit it. So your claim is only going to take three to four months instead of three to four years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's a lifesaver. You, you, although the money might come, like you don't want to wait four years for something you can get in three months. So that's like exactly. way too long. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, even if you, you started the, the transition process and you're getting out the next day, before even finding a job, you should get that claim submitted through an expert then. Yeah. If not, try to do it right before you get out because it will end up, it's, it's a very supplemental income. I mean, to get, whether it's 50% or 100%, it's an actual job. 
I mean, you can get it to where you're employable or unemployable. Right. Still want to work. So it's just, it's a lot of stuff in there. And that book talks about this stuff too and how to do it. But it's just, that, that was key to me is getting that done quickly and get finding a job. You really have to understand on how to write a resume. You can't just put what you did. In the, I, I was a grunt in the infantry <laughs> and I was, I was marching along and killed people in, in the hills. No, you can't do that. The employer's going to say, see you later. Goodbye. We have a psycho. Um, you have to be able to restructure that. And there's resources out there that tell you how to reword your job and how to put that in there. I recommend going to those people. There's free people out there, but the best thing that happened for me is I actually paid like, I think a hundred dollars to have somebody write a professional re resume for me. Both That's not one, bad. One for the civilian side and one for the federal job side, which a lot of military guys want to go and work for the military in a civilian capacity. I, I would have paid a hundred dollars just for the federal resume because that one's so tedious and you got to have all that other nonsense on there. That's way more in depth than the regular civilian one. You know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? So like, that's, that's, that's well worth it, man. Like outsource the things that you don't want to do. There's other people that do stuff professionally that you like, same thing, like cutting the grass, dude, you don't want to catch a grass, get someone to go do it. Use your time doing what you do. Good. You know what I mean? So good for you, man. I, I would have done the same thing. Honestly, a good, good idea. Really. It was the best thing I could have done. And to be honest with you, I didn't learn that until after I got done with the first job. Um, okay. I, I got burnt out done with the job. So I didn't want to be there anymore. So I got out. And I, I didn't plan ahead again. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm done. Bye. See ya. I'm like, I'll figure it out. Three months later, here I am trying to find another job. And I was applying for federal jobs. And, you know, like you just said, it's a different animal. You have, you know, your resume is about 20 pages long compared to two pages in the civilian world. Right. And you're putting everything in there. And then you got to load that stuff in the computer. So when they when they go through the selection process, the computer sees your resume first and pulls you and gets you in for an interview. Because once we get into the interview, we got it. We're good. I mean, yeah. talk to other military people, tell stories, do everything and get in there. But passing through that gate, which is the computer analysis part of the federal jobs, um, is the hardest thing to understand. But a resume writer will tell you how to interview and how to do that and whether to do that. So it's well worth the money. Well, How'd you find yours? Um, the funny thing is, is I looked online for military expert resume writers. They probably find, there you go. To, what'd you look on like LinkedIn, Google, Google, Google. Um, LinkedIn is key too, but then I decided, you know what? I need to put this in my book. So it's in the book. There you go. Another five, nugget, man. Five top, top resume writers for veterans. Just get the book. Y'all get the book. So the, <laughs> could be the answer to all the, all the test answers in the book, man. Uh, I would like to say it is. I'm being, but I'm not perfect. No one's perfect. And like yeah. said, somebody gets the book and says, you don't have this. I will research it and I will find it and I will put it in there and I'll email you a free update just to make sure you get the knowledge you do because the veterans need to be taken care of. They don't need to be left behind. I'm probably going to just look for something that's not in the book and get my update done. There you go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I'm about to get on that, man. Too easy. I write yeah. about, I write about free blog articles on my site. I have a website that has free blog articles. That What's the website? It's called uh, the, the veteran doctor.com. All okay. one word, the veteran doctor.com. And there's free blog. I write mental health. Um, I'm writing about stuff for my new book. Uh, I have two new books going to come out at the end of this year. Um, one is on alternative therapies Okay. Uh, for veterans. You know, as well as I do, you don't want to go see a psychologist or a psychiatrist yeah. because they don't understand where you've been. They don't understand what you did downrange. They don't understand what, what's going on. And there's a trust issue there. So the book is about 400 pages long, and it tells about all the alternatives you can go to until you're ready to go to a clinical psychologist. Peer groups. There's, there's organizations out there like Waypoint Vets, um, MVP, which is Merging Vets and Players. Professional athletes have the same problems that veterans do. So they get together and they talk about it. And it's just amazing to actually be in that atmosphere and hear the story. Talks about, you know, I went on a trip this last week with a Nevada um, Outdoor Adventure Foundation. They took me on a bear hunt for free. Wow. With, with other veterans and experienced just amazing therapy in the outdoors just to do that. You get um, one? Um, I, I missed. <laughs> I, have a, I have a really good shot. But you know what? When you have a bear a few hundred or a few feet away from you, and you start shaking and you start getting your adrenaline off. Like, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. I sat in a stand for 22 hours. Damn. And I was like, get ready to shoot. And I jerked the trigger. And I was just, I was so mad at myself. But I was like, you know what? 
sometimes you get the bear. Sometimes the bear well, wins. I mean, it's not your time. When, I'm going to go next year. So you reverted back to like a private shooting is uh, at like a uh, basic yep. training when they don't know how to shoot their weapon for the first right. time. And I, I am an excellent shot. I've shot all the way out to a mile with some of my guns, but my adrenaline and I was so nervous and that bear was cutting right for me. I'm like, that. I got to get this thing or I'm going to die. And I jerked the shot. Luckily the gunshot scared him away, but it's like, it was an adrenaline rush. It was wild. I can only imagine, man. I've only heard stories, but dude, yeah, bear. I've only seen bears. We used to feed them apples and like marshmallows up in New Hampshire. They had this thing called Clark's Trading Post with the big ass black bears on the other side of the thing, man. But they're they're huge, dude. Like I was good experience the, though. I did this experience in Idaho, and it was it was okay. big ass bears, black bears up there. Now, granted, they just they just want you know, like you said, the, the bait that's out there, but wild and. The same organization has actually taken a hundred veterans um, to a lake to teach them how to fly fish. That's what's up, man. And then they talk about you can let off things off your shoulders. Um, you can talk to other people and let the, realize that you're not the only one experiencing this stuff. There's every there's I mean only one percent of the population is veterans. You're not the only people. Or there's, there's millions of veterans out there that are, that are sharing this, experiencing the same problems, challenges. Yeah. And, you let someone else get through it it'll help you get through it too because you find out the way they did it most definitely yeah, dude hell, exactly it's only going to add value to people's life man if the message just gets out there and people talk about it because some people think they don't have a valid story because they didn't deploy or you know it's the same thing that they say about the disability oh i don't deserve it because i didn't lose my legs exactly. oh, man, that's like it's that's the wrong outlook on it man we're all different dude you know there, there could be something in your head i mean just to give you an example i was blown up quite a few times in Afghanistan in 2010. So I got my, my melon rocked. Um, I didn't understand why I was having nightmares, dreams, headaches, migraines, everything. That's why I went and studied my PhD in psychology. But the okay. thing is, I didn't want to become a clinician. I didn't want to be another psychologist that's out there and just judge people and help them guide their ways. I became a research psychologist. So what I go out and do is I research and I teach clinicians and I teach veterans and I teach everyone how to deal with that stuff. Um, I'm like I said, I'm not licensed clinical, but research I do amazing work with because the, the book I talked about alternative therapies. Another book is a lot of clinicians in my area will bring me in to be the the uh, what do you call it the uh, conduit between the veteran and the clinician. The liaison, yeah. I I know the techniques that clinicians are using will work on veterans, but veterans don't trust clinicians, so they put me in there because they trust me because I've been downrange, I've done it, been there, done that. And um, so I wrote my, my third book I'm almost done with is, is about, it's called Bridging the Gap, Bridging the Gap Between Clinicians and Combat Veterans so they can link together, educating each of them about what it's like being a veteran to the clinician and what it's like being a clinician to the, the veteran so they can understand each other. That's pretty awesome, man. It's, it, what popped in my mind was like, you're doing something similar to like, you know how a lot of doctors go to school for medicine, but they don't learn about nutrition. Yep. Same thing. A lot of doctors go to school to teach, you know, treat veterans, but they don't learn about veterans. Yep. So you're so you're bridging that gap, man. That's that's pretty. Yeah, so pretty I'm, awesome, man. I understand the, the difference, and like I said, I've, I come in the situation where I can actually take veterans, and if I feel like, hey, why don't you go with me to the doctor and we'll get through this together? They love it. So I'm like, if I write a book in the same aspect, it'll be it'll help them understand and maybe. Well, ultimately reduce that that suicide count that we have that big bad 22 number that happens every day seriously man like we all know people that have done it you know what i mean if you've been in long enough you know you know more than one it's it's kind of right. sickening to think of that but it's it's the truth man to like what um so you used to be a first sergeant i got a question on that like what, what would you do with when you had people in your formation and you're in your company that were getting ready to leave. Did you ever talk to them and stuff like that? Or like, I mean, looking back on it, you know, what was, what was your take when you had people ETS and stuff like that? Yeah. I, I, I actually sat them down and I gave them the talk of, you know, Hey, are you sure you know what you're doing? Do you have a plan? Are you sure your plan is solid? Um, what is your backup plan? And as long as they answered the questions, right. I was like, Hey, you would try to do you served your country, whether it's be for two years, four years, six years, 10 years, whatever. Right. And, but if they didn't have a plan, that would raise questions like, hey, did you think about this? Now, I didn't listen to my own medicine because I didn't. I yeah. had, I thought I had a plan. And right. It, it failed too, but I survived and got through it. Um, 
But I think now the stuff I know, if I knew that, I would have a totally different talk with them. What about like what stuff with sick call and stuff like that? What did would you talk about with them back in the day compared to what would you talk to them about if you could have a, the chance to do it again? Um, are we talking about like, like health wise? Yeah, even anything with just to do with health or even like I don't know how it was for you like when you're in, but like a lot of people didn't really seem to use sick call just because of the stigma was given off by there going. There you go. Yeah, um, I actually huge on that. So I I have a big advocate of. Uh, Go to sick call if you're hurt, you're broken. Make sure you document everything and keep those records with you. Don't ever let them out of your hands. Um, the reason being, it's going to be key when you transition. Right. After all those records going into the VA is more power, more um, representation of what what happened to you in the military, and then it's ultimately going to give you more of a of a rating, which is more money. Exactly. Did you know that when you were in? I did to a level, but I really focused on it the last six months to a year on gathering it all together. Um, what made you do that? What made you turn into overdrive and get that going? Somebody told me. <laughs> Listen to other people. Uh, you gotta. Did you ask or did someone mention like, hey, hey man, you might want to? I, I asked. I okay. said, is there anything I need to know while I'm getting out? They said, medical records, medical records, document everything. Yeah, but you went 20, 21 years without it. So it's like that, just like a damn grenade going off. And you're like, oh. Well, I was told when I was a private by my first sergeant and said, hey, make sure you keep track of all your records. So I kept track of all my records. There's only one circumstance I, I, I'm missing like two years. Yeah. It was a long story. I, basically, it was malpractice at the hospital and some doctors got fired on what happened to me. And for ironically enough, when I went to go get my medical records, those two years were missing. So you don't, you know, someone in that yeah. medical area took them, but oh, yeah. I didn't need them. I was so I I got injured quite a bit in um, Afghanistan, so I had enough to get me through everything. But it was, I still have problems with that issue that I had when I was a drill sergeant. So it's pretty crazy, a crazy story. <laughs> what were some of the things that helped you get it, like you know, get over your get over and through your problems that you had once you transition out? I think the biggest thing um, that helped me was Pierce. Pierce. Um, in Ve Vegas is huge on veterans. And there's a lot of peer to peer groups that will actually, you can sit down with them and not like a session of, you know, like psychology session with, a, with those peers. It's, it's more of a fun environment. You go work out with like 20 veterans. Okay. And as you're working out, you talk to them and start sharing stories and like, hey, that's what happened to me. How'd you get through it? And you can just compare notes back and forth. And it really got me on a direction to where I need to go and like, hey, do you know somebody that's good for this? And like, yeah, I know this. So it was a resource, um, like get together. Right. Where you share your issues. And if someone was like if someone was really down that day, we could walk over and we can start helping them. So peer groups were huge. Don't do it yourself. Don't get into the house and get into a little cave and stay there um and try to deal with your own issues because you gotta talk to somebody about them. Whether it's financial, whether it's transitioning, whether it's resumes, whether it's VA claims, whether getting a job, there's tons of jobs out there. You just got to be say the right thing and do the right thing and do mock interviews with your peers. You can get through it and, and they know what's yeah. going on. I mean, you, we've done boards. We've done all that stuff. I mean, you've done all that. You can do uh, interview. All that stuff on the civilian sector is a lot easier than stuff that you went through in the military. It might be a different animal, but... You know, we can all do it, man. Like you said, you just got to put yourself around the right people and and at the right time. It's, but I feel like we all we all suffer from that isolation because you lose that sense of camaraderie. You, it's like whether you, no matter where you ETS at, unless you get out like and stay at Fort Carson or wherever, brag and you're around all those people. And they, you know, like Florida is a military community, but if you come in, if you're going somewhere else and you don't have that connection, you know, make sure you still got them somewhere that way you have that outlet because you don't want to do it alone, man. You know, I've right. kept in contact with a lot of my friends over the years, even though we're not in the same state, but it's still good because they, they can understand you, man. Don't, yeah. don't lose. And you never know what people are going through, man. Don't always wait for the phone, the ring for you, pick up the phone and call somebody else because buddy check. Yeah, right. buddy check, dude. I, we did it while we were in. Why Why not do it when we're out? You know, I mean, you see more people are going through crazier time. When everyone was in, the hierarchy of needs was taken care of. You probably learned about this, right? It's like, yep. dude, you had your food taken care of. You had your shelter. You didn't have to really worry about none of that stuff, man. You just worry about spending your paycheck for the most time when you're a young soldier. That's it, man. Did I spend my whole check this week? 
Oh, I gotta go to the mall again and get some more clothes, man. Gotta get out to the club or you know do whatever. The the but um yeah, that's wild, man. It's, what yeah, you you have to create your own support network when you get out, whether it is because I did it for a while where I just stayed recluse and I was in studies and doing stuff and I wouldn't talk to anybody. But I found out the more I interacted with some peers, whether it would go have coffee, whether it go work out, whether it would be whatever, I became mentally. I guess you could say more healthy yeah, and physically more healthy too. getting out and doing things because I was getting things off my chest. I was finding out things. I was t- taking action on my life. Right. And making it work because no matter where you live, you can be- live in, you know, a very rural town. You can live in a big city. You could do whatever. There's always somebody else there, whether that's a veteran or you can call, you can get on the internet. You can email me on my website. Somebody, to help with whatever issues you're going through most definitely man there's always some, it's you don't have to get in that dark place and think there's no way out there's always a way out man we've done we've done you're never going to get dealt something in life that you can't overcome we, we were trained in the military to overcome anything why would we allow it all man as i was saying like why change now yeah, exactly so we have more perseverance than we think at the moment you know i mean i've been in some bad moments i've been through divorces i've been through bad relationships i've been through my father dying, whatever, you get pretty low. Yeah. You were already given tools by the military to get through those times. And if you can't feel like you're going to get it, go get help. Whether it might be a friend, it might be a doctor, it might be just somebody to talk to that you know, get it off your chest. There's always something out there. You got to have a good positive mental attitude. What, what uh, helped you start building your own network or like where, what made you, you know, go to overdrive, say, I got to start building out my network now that I'm like out here with sort of nothing reclused up in the house, stuff like that. Well, I was, it was a survival aspect of it. I was getting really dark. Um, I wasn't, I didn't want to commit suicide or anything like that, but it was just like, I was gaining weight. I was getting dark. I wasn't getting out. I wasn't I'm building my friend network. I wasn't doing anything. And then I realized, you know what? I'm writing about this stuff. I'm doing all this stuff. Why don't I start living it? Yeah. <laughs> Live it. Make it part of your life. Everyone says, I got to go to the gym and the first of the year, you know, do all these uh, resolutions and stuff, but they never do it. If you make it part of your schedule, then it's going to be part of your life and you're going to, you're going to get better and better and better. So that's what you have to do. Now you like, you said something pretty valuable right there is like that I've been sort of thinking about for my own life recently is the schedule. Like you go from being so scheduled in the military to you could, if you don't have a job, even if you do have a job, all the other structure is gone, man, once you get out. So it's like if you don't have a schedule, you find out like uh, tasks that take you five minutes, you're going to drag out to be all day just because you have the leeway. But you're setting yourself up for failure because you could be doing so much more with your time. But, man, I mean, I, I, I still sometimes sleep in longer than probably most people do. But it's like, you know. I guess some days is not bad, but it's not zero six every morning, you know, getting up or zero five. That that was kind of nixed out the window when I got out. But if you let yourself go too far, like I've done it before, like you could find yourself behind the power curve, man, uh, to say the least. What's your take on that? Like, did your schedules? I mean, you were so, you, everyone in the military is coming from structure. So did you sort of transition and have that same structures? Like maybe not the PT and stuff like that, but what your schedule look like? I think after once I got out, I got like you were. I was like, I'm not going to get up in the morning again yeah. a little bit. But, you know, it doesn't matter what schedule you have as long as you make that's, it. That's eight. true. Um, it could be start at 9 o'clock. Let's go right. work out from 9 to 10. Let's do this from that to that. It doesn't have to be so structured either. It could be a little bit of playtime in there too. But as long as it's good for you and your life and your structure. Um, right. And use that discipline that you had in the military and just redirect it into what you're doing there. Because we we only use a small portion of our brain and our body to survive, but if you push it longer, you're going to persevere and you're going to you know basically build your life better by not and nothing ever happens if you just do nothing. That's you have true. to do something in order to get something. So if I want to if I want to get a better job, hey, I got to go to school or I got to have a better resume. So do it. Don't just sit there and talk about it. Act on it. And that's the biggest thing is acting on it and put it making part of your life. Um, yeah, you're, not, yeah, you're right. You're surrounded by a whole bunch of negative people. You're not going to have a positive life with negative people in your life. Get rid of the negative people, put positive people in your life. You are what you're surrounded with. So 
make that part of your life too. So a whole bunch of examples like that. No, you're right, man. You, your network, your network is your net worth. You know, like you are like the five people you put yourself around the most. And sometimes it might be your family or best friends, but if they're toxic, they're not. You're, that's what you're going to be like unless you break that mold, man. Absolutely, I believe in that yeah. wholeheartedly too. Sometimes you might be feeling like you're by yourself, but maybe by yourself is better than being around four or five people that are going to drag you down to the road that you don't want to go down or that you're trying to get away from. So, there's been times when I've had I've had a lot of toxic people around me. I'd disconnect from them, and guess what I would use in that? I'd use the outdoors. I'd go for, you know, a hike. I would go to, uh, unfortunately, being in Las Vegas, I'm surrounded by a bunch of national parks. Right. I, I take a drive to Zion. Zion, there you go, yeah. And Why I, not? I up there and come to find out, I walked into this outfitter because I wanted to get some waders to go up the Narrows Canyon with a, with a lake. The outfitter happens to be a veteran. He goes, you're a veteran? You're a veteran? We linked up together. We went out together. So veterans are everywhere. Zion yeah. is a small little community, Springdale. But veterans everywhere, and they find out you're a veteran, they're going to help you, they're going to guide you, and they're going to you know, be with you too. And I and now I have a lifelong Marine friend that's in Zion, that, you know, Lion Gurus. He uh, is a, the best outdoor person to ever be with. Just because I got bored, and I didn't want to be around negative people, I just wanted to just go by myself and re-energize or rejuvenate from the nature. Yeah. You know, linked up with another veteran that we have commonalities i've helped him with his stuff he's helped me with my stuff and we just we we're, we're brothers now just yeah just by by doing doing taking action on something positive right and getting out there and doing it and guess what folks national parks free when you're 100 go ahead yeah. get your get your go ahead get your uh your, your id card to get you one I, I signed up at zion actually when we went to las vegas we went to go check it out and i showed them my id and they gave me the uh Gave me a little uh, card. It doesn't have to be 100%. It's free to all oh, military veterans. All military veterans? Oh, even all. better. Sorry about that, folks. Rewind that. All military I keep veterans. It up, keep it on my book. I keep it updated. Up I know you got, you got to live in, but that's good, though, for you, too, because you keep it all. Uh, I talked to another vet, and she was, she wrote a, she's an author, too, and she wrote a book on, uh, you know, how to, how to join the military as a, as a girl, you know, uh, you know, what, what the military offers to offer. And she sort of did it so generic because she was saying, if it's not a, like a living book, it would be out of date. Right. So if, if like, say you put the post nine 11 GI bill, but then 10 years they go to something else, then the book will be out of date. Right. Updated, she, what's up? You got to update it. You got to make it living. When it comes yeah. Out. So she said the Australian army reached out to her though, because it's such a generic, it's generic. It doesn't go into all what the U S military offers. So like she's gonna be working with Australia now, I guess, and maybe use her book. But it's it's just awesome to hear about people uh, writing books and having all these handbooks and these resources out there for people to. I didn't know. I, I didn't think. Of, I didn't even have it. You got to have an exit plan in business, in uh, in life, and you know, on everything, man. And people don't think about that before they get into stuff. I most certainly didn't think of. The only exit plan I thought of after the, for the military was I'm going to sign up for this and then I'm going to use the GI Bill to go to college. So I guess I had a potential exit plan. I did. That's what I did. I, you know? happened, I happened to stay in 22 years longer. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had I, my whole purpose of getting in the military was to get out of the situation of the homelessness and to get college money so I can build my education for higher employment. Right. I ended up getting into a career field that may, I made in 22 years, but now I'm taking that education. And I'm working for the government in a civilian capacity at my regular job, and I do all this veteran stuff after that. And they intertwine together, too. So it's just I created by my, uh, my passion, my love. You can't go wrong with that, man, because it doesn't even feel like you're working when you do that. No, I mean, I, I sit there, and we all know in the military how long we work. My job does not allow me to work over eight hours. So I get bored. Yeah. <laughs> so I start writing. I start helping veterans, start doing this stuff. Um, mm -hmm. and just started creating what, what, what makes me um, happy and interested. So do you, you think you would have started earlier or do you think it all happened at the same, like all at the right time? Did you think you wanted to get out of the military, go to school for your doc doctoral degree and go for, you know, figure all that out or did it sort of all trickle along as you, as you got out? Um, I think everything happens for a reason, but I didn't have the plan to do that until it happened. Okay. So. I think my plan developed along the way through education and through uh, experiencing it. But um, the doctorate, I knew I wanted to understand my injuries. So my injuries forced me to, to pursue that because I didn't trust or understand a, a clinical psychologist. Now that I do, I'm like, okay, I know what he's saying now. 
but and then that led into you know searching for other things and the books writing the books and stuff helped me understand transition better so everything made me into who i wanted to be and i look back i wouldn't change it at all yeah uh, it made me who i am oh uh, of course everyone wants to make more money <laughs> you never can make enough money right but you you create that and that's what i'm working on i'm working on creating that through other books and through i opened up a drone business i'm huge into photography okay and i opened up a drone business so i could do aerial photography for people and stock photos on the sunsets and different things like that and that's where my passion is is flying so drones are also like in a, in a real plane like you like to fly real planes too well ironically enough i have a i have a faa drone license um okay and I, taking my private pilot's license now too hey good for you ma'am i got a buddy that he wants to fly so i have to connect you guys but um a nah, lot man. Of resources out there for flying lessons a lot of good resources i'm out i'm gonna have to get them from you and, and put you put you guys in contact but uh now that's cool man i think a lot of stuff is going to be like in the future is they're going to drones for a lot of stuff i mean oh, yeah. whether it's photographs deliveries so it's like you're on top of the, you're still staying on top of the trends which is nice and doing something that you enjoy which is even better because they say most people die on monday man. i don't know how true that is but it's kind of interesting to put in perspective like going and having heart attacks going to work man because most people hate what they do live your life to the fullest every single day because you never know when when your maker's going to take you my my father and I, I loved him to death, but one second he's there, and the next second a, heart, a widow maker heart attack happened to him, and it instant gone. I mean, and everything he had and did and accomplished for what? So take care of yourself. Yeah, live your life to the fullest. Don't be stupid about it, but just enjoy it to the fullest, and don't sit around because you only have one life. You got to live it to, to the best best way you can seriously man most definitely if you had to look back on the army and the transition that you had out what would you say like as a, if we did an aar what would you say for a sustainment recommendation and an improvement for the whole process of getting out not to bash them or anything like that but just you know looking back on it what would you say what was good bad and what could improve on i've done research on this because i want to understand why it happened to me but i've done research on transition all the military services and i'm not knocking them don't prepare their soldiers or airmen or Navy, whatever you want to call us, veterans or the civilian world. So their transition pro, uh, programs are not good at all. I don't care what service you served in, Army, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, whatever. So I think the, the transition systems need to be taken more seriously by members in the military. If they say you need to do it a year out, do it a year out. Don't do it the last two weeks of your career. Yeah. Um, Because everyone does it that way. In two weeks, they think they got enough. No, it's not enough. You got to actually get out there and go do where you're gonna where you're finally gonna finally live, research the the demographics of the area. Like I said, to not have any bills, you know, have everything going. If you want to go to school, find the area that's going to be most conducive to your school. Do the research and the the transition programs, which the Army's ACAP will help you with that. But I think they still need to improve it better for each soldier that's getting out. No, you're you're absolutely right. What do you think was something that was good that was offered on the way out? Um, I think I was offered a little more time in my ACAP, so it helped me out a little bit. But um, the good thing is, it's just all the things you learn through your time in the military. Okay. Um, the the camaraderie, the the the, the actual vet or veteran or soldier network that you make your battle buddies, those are valuable. Maintain those, like you said, you may still maintain your uh, communication with your buddies. All those skill sets, commu good communication, you know, structure, responsibility, you know, those are good values to help you in the civilian world. Because, like, we, we're teaching, I have a, a classes I teach here in Vegas for employers. I give them what they call military 101. All the good attributes that a soldier or military person has that will be valuable to their companies. And they start hiring people because of those values. So you have to just, all that stuff you learn, don't just throw it out. Some people don't even want to say they were in the service. They, they, that's true. And that's something you've got to stop doing because you've got to be proud of what you did. No matter what it is, doesn't matter what MOS, doesn't matter what your occupational skill is, doesn't matter if you got an Article 15. Be proud of what you did in the military because they gave you some skill sets that will stick with you forever. Nah, man, that's a great point. Good way to put it. What, um, do you ever have any friends when you, like out that are getting out the military now that you try to coach up or you try to let them know from your from your shortcomings like how, how's that look every every almost every day 
I, I get called or I get emailed or I'm like, hey, can you uh, guide me through this? Um, and like I said, all the stuff I've learned helps them through that, but maybe they have a little twist. Yeah. Two, you're together with two minds to get through that twist. Yeah, yeah, good for you, man. I'm glad they're reaching out. It's probably some people that you might have been bugging that finally get the light turned on and they say, hey, yes. hey I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call John now. It's been five years, but let me go ahead and get it on, on the roll. I would, I'd be online um, on the internet and um, they're like, hey, I haven't heard from you in a while. Give me a call. Then we start talking. And they're like, I never thought of it that way. You know, I know, man. They come out to Vegas, like you said you did, come out to Vegas and they'll like, hey, get, let's get together. And it's just like having a reunion. Right. Good times, talking about the old times, talking about the you know what's going on now. And it's just a good time just to basically take care of your buddy. You're right, man. We got to have, that's what I always think about doing more things like that. Like, can, so we got to come up with something as a, as a collective group, man. They're with all the people that are trying to influence veterans and in the right direction. And like, yeah, they might not let people get on the base and like uh, tell people how to get out the military, but you could build up a following enough that you could like do stuff in military towns that you could still have guest speakers and, oh, yeah. you know, a, a, a dinner or whatever, just an informative brief. But, you know, it's just, That'd be kind of cool to do, man, because it's like no one's out there really doing that. They got, like you said, they got ACAP. They got people coming in and giving you the hour classes and signing your paper and saying you got to change this and change that. But as a whole, once you get not, out, you realize that. Yeah. Uh, they're yeah. not there, man. It's not personalized to cater to you to sit down. Now, when you do that ME med board and you go through that and you get that Pueblo and you have other things happen, now that's a different story. That might be a different one on one, you know. But, but they don't do that for everybody. They're still going to, even the MEB process um, and medical board process is not encompassing for transition. They still go through withdrawals. They go through, you know, not oh, yeah. having the peer groups. And they're also hurt on top of that. So they have extra things they're dealing with. True. So a peer to peer, like you said, even in, in certain cities, getting veterans to come together as a collective to, to one, experience camaraderie, and two, to talk about issues and get through those issues through other people that have been there and done that. I talk to people here in Vegas. We have we have a pretty good structure here for military. Um, but I talk to people about suicide. I talk to people about transition. I talk to people about mental health. I talk to people about everything. Um, and it really helps when they hear it from somebody else that's been there. Yeah, most definitely, because they got someone that they can relate to, man. Like like you said earlier, a lot of people go to the VA and they don't think they can just have that connection with their the worker because they haven't served. And that's valid, I guess, you know, because the same thing if you talk to someone about being a single parent or whatever, if you don't, if they don't, if they're not in that same boat or they weren't in that same boat, how are they going to relate? They're just going to listen to you and sort of fall on deaf ears. And I don't know what they probably don't know what to say. And you want them to say something, but they're not going to say something because they don't know what to say type of deal. Same, same thing, right? Well, they're also afraid of stigmas. I mean, there's a lot of stigmas out there that are, are placed on veterans, both self-imposed. They, they don't, they put stigmas on themselves or they, uh, um, the public puts stigmas on them from the movies. They hear about all these, active shooters and they're all military people <laughs> that's only like one or two people that's not the whole few million that are out there right uh, what about this one right here you ever like thought of, have you ever been like looked at or has anyone ever told you you might have been like oh too quali over qualified for a job or like i mean sometimes it feels like veterans are looked at as a threat i, I mean i've had that sort of happen to me sometimes so that's kind of what's your take I have been looked at numerous times and said I was overqualified, and I said, then how so? Right. And they they said that your military resume is too big. So I had I was actually told by somebody to dumb my resume down and see if I get more hits, and I do. Um, so, I mean, that's another good example. Don't put everything on your resume. Only put five to ten years on there to show yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, dumb it down because – Every time I went to an employer that said I was overqualified, I was like, I was like, what? Give me a break. <laughs> I just because I defended my country, I'm overqualified. It was their way of saying that we're, we're intimidated by we're you. We're threatened by you. And that's what and I did the same thing, man. When I was like, How are you overqualified for I'm not like a I don't know, man. I, I did the same thing, but I've I've heard it from a couple of different people too. So yeah. it seems like it's 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 real out there. But I I'm guess you you dumb it down and make it seem like you're not such a Go you gotta, get her. I don't know. Go into stealth mode. Get get your camouflage on. You know. Yeah. Put on your resume and act like you. Yeah, I was in the service. 
no, I would rather talk about this job instead, you know, and, and you just, you, you get the feel for what, what this employer is looking for. You play off it. There you go. What, um, what you got working on now besides your books that you're still doing, you got anything else in the works? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm working on the books. Um, I have blog articles I write every week, um, put out there for people to read. They're all free. Uh, you get on there and go to my blog and it gets on there. Um, I have other things I'm trying to work. Like you said, I'm trying to work on, 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 uh, speaking engagements to, uh, get people together and talk about that. So I got a few of those in the works. I have a drone business that I'm, I'm doing to fly and stuff like that. And then my two books take up a lot of my time right now. So the one on alternative therapies is called um, dodging the shrink. <laughs> it's kind of okay. a name. And then the, um, the other one's called bridging the gap, which is bridging the gap between uh, veterans and uh, clinicians. Okay. All yeah. right. Well, you got any, uh, you got anyone that you could call out here that maybe want to could come on here and share their story? I have tons of veterans that I have underneath my little repertoire. So yeah, I, I could definitely, oh, yeah. I, I have uh, retired officers from the air force. I have, we have a big group here. I, I actually, we formed a, a chamber of commerce, a veterans chamber of commerce here in Las Vegas. And I'm one of the board members. So I have so many veterans that are out there that, can share their stories, their transition stories. So you let me know what you want. I'll find it. And hey, send anybody you got that wants to share the same thing that we just did, man, just their ups and downs and whatever they want to give out there to the world. That way we can make someone else's transition a bit easier than ours. But uh, tell them they got recall formation, Sergeant Major's detail, man. All right. I will. I will. But, hey, you got anything that you want to, that you want to end off on? Um, no, I just, I just want everyone to know. Just remember this. You're not alone. There's no problem or challenge that's too rough that you can't get through. I found that asking your peers and people that have been in the military to help you out, there's no shame in that game. Yeah. Be, proud of it, be proud of your service. Say, hey, have you experienced this? Oh, my God, you experienced the same thing. How did you get through it? Share your story. Talk about it. Like this is on this podcast. Share your story and show other people that you're not alone. Right. We'll, we'll get together and we'll figure this thing out together. Because... There's no nothing in this world that's worth taking your life for. Nothing. Nah, nah man. Just think that you got to think about the people that are around you. They don't want to see you gone. People want to really get one chance. So, you know, let's make it yeah. the best that we can. It's not easy. Some days are going to be good. Some days are going to be bad. But hopefully we get the chance to live another day and, and go after it again, man. But appreciate those, what you're doing. with good. On those good days, you know, you basically you, you held to hold your head high and keep driving forward. And those bad days, lean on your, lean on your buddy. Buddy's there, there you go, man. Pick up the phone, dude. We're so connected, but we're so disconnected. That's what I always say. I'm like, damn, man, we got so much technology, but sometimes people think they're they don't have no help. All you gotta do is get on one of the platforms and make it. You can make a damn call on every on every uh, social media thing. You don't even have to have their phone number anymore. You can't be like, oh, I didn't have the I didn't have the alert roster. You don't need the alert roster, man. You got the damn Facebook. You could call, do a video call, all that. You know, so it's no excuses, man. You know, ch check in, check up on everybody. And uh, just want to say thanks for what you're doing, man, for everybody. And, you know, that's what it's all about. Maybe one day we could get together, send me out to Vegas, man, on a business trip. You know uh, what I mean? You need <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> definitely. But, I appreciate you having me on to, today to share that, share the story. Hey, no problem, man. Thanks for bringing uh, all your expertise and your time to the table. And hopefully you have a good time at the uh, hockey game later, man. You know, the Knights are probably not going to win tonight, man. You got to tie that series up, man. You got to get, the, gotta get interested, man. 3-1, 3-1. Got to go 3-1. Oh, man. Well, hey, man. We'll go see Knights what happens. Go, go Knights, go. Hey, what uh, one word to describe your military service? Uh, I would say it was amazing. Um, amazing. There was rough times, of course. We all had rough times sitting there on those those cold days and those those guard nights and stuff like that. But yeah, amazing. And the biggest thing I miss in that whole thing is is the camaraderie and the people. But I'm re yeah. I'm reforming that here, and everyone should do it where they're at too. Not nah, most definitely, man. All right. Well, I appreciate you being on, everyone. Thanks for listening in to another episode. If you guys are a veteran or you know people that are serving in the military, send them my way so they can share their story and we can help each other. So appreciate y'all listening. Have a blessed one.